Well, here we go, back again with another video. And as I'm sure you've all heard today the news, William Story has been in Sunderland. He's been at the stadium alight, he's been on business talks, he's been in meetings, and he's also been interviewed by Nick Barnes on BBC Newcastle. Now, whatever your opinion is of William's story, that's your opinion. Basically, he's come on and he's saying that, first of all, he has four major backers. Four major backers. Two, that's been involved in sport. He didn't say which sport. Two, which are basically going to be sleepers. Sleeping. What's the word again? <laughs> They're going to be silent partners, that's it. Silent partners, it's been a long day. I've been up since half past four this morning. But yes, two silent partners and two people who are well involved in sports and have a lot of money. And he says 85% of the money will be coming from the four people in that consortium, the four backers. William Story has got some money in himself and he has, for me, he's going to be the main person, the main figurehead. And he says, without a shadow of a doubt, his bid on the table is the highest, way higher than anybody else's. Now, I don't know how this works, because Sunderland and Donald are going through a period of, what was it, an excuse, <laughs> exclusivity, <laughs> I can't even say it. Well, a period of something. <laughs> it's been a period of something. Yeah, you think I'd be dreaming, wouldn't you? So like Nick Barnes says, apparently Donald's in talks with somebody else. Now, he's only allowed to be in talks with this other person. Now, their bid isn't as high as William Story's bid. Now, how does William Story know this? Ah, uh, is he allowed to know what other bids are? If he's not, then how does he know? that his is the highest on the table. I don't quite understand that. There's no disclosure. We're not allowed to know who the backers are. And we're not allowed to know what his bid is. And he says he's not mucking about. He's not trying to get the club for peanuts. He is going to put an offer in close to the asking price. I think close to the asking price. So if he's not allowed to disclose that, how does he know what the other ones have disclosed because I'm sure he won't be allowed to know what the other backers have disclosed. So that bit there, I quite, I try to understand that. So it's William's story up here to tell a good story. To I don't know what he's up here for. So he's got to be up here. You've got to take into. You've got to. You've got to believe that there's a real. That there's a, a real. A real major chance of this guy taking over, and that he's saying his is the biggest bid. So, in his mind, it must be the biggest bid, and he feels it's the biggest bid, and he really feels confident at taking over at Sunderland Football Club. Now, like I said, it's head and shoulders above anybody else's bid, but how does he know that? He says he has a handful of aces, and that he feels a bit... He's a bit, no, I wouldn't say annoyed, but it's just like he can't deal his hand at this moment in time until he's allowed to. So Donald's in talks with this other party. So is Donald an exclusivity? Fuck. Donald's in, in talks with this other party. So he kind of taught William's story until Donald decides about this other party. So am I trying to strangle someone? But uh, like I see it's mad. He says the fans are knowledgeable. Obviously, I'm not. He says the fans are knowledgeable. They've been in the doldrums. Sunderland is a sleeping giant, and it's worth buying. He's been to Roker Park. He's been to the Sol. He's, you know, openly a West Ham fan, but he has a lot of Sunderland fans who are his friends. So, you know, it's it, it just... It's... Like I said, it, it also says about the Formula One fiasco is that it will all come out in the washing, and he will be vindicated that it was all basically bullshit. The whole lot. And, and his energy drink's worth a hundred million. Now, he only had 500 quid in his bank at one point over. 
but it's worth 100 million at this moment in time. He has his fingers in 15 other businesses. So it's a strange, it's a strange thing. It's, it's a strange thing. He has, he has some funny scenes as well. Funny scenes as, as, as well. It's like, when you're wrong, you cannot be strong. Now, when you're wrong, you cannot be strong. That's pretty obvious. If you're wrong, you're not strong. You put a bet on a horse and you pick the wrong horse. You're not going to win any money, so you haven't made any profit, so you're not strong. You know, you put a coupon on, and it fails. That's, that's a pretty pretty obvious statement, that, William. Pretty obvious statement. Now, he does sound a very intelligent man. And he seems well-spoken. Very clever. A lot of contacts. So, I have to believe in what he says. I'm going to believe in every word he says at this moment in time. I call me gullible, but I'm going to believe in what he says because what's the point of coming on on, the, on, on on BBC Newcastle and talking about a load of nonsense if it's not true? So it must be true and not nonsense. So you have to believe what he says. Like I said, he wants, he says, his son is just like pointless, a waste of time in League One, a sleeping giant. He feels that he can benefit Sunderland and the city and get them up in the League One. And they really belong in the Premier League. Now, everybody's going to say that he wants to buy Sunderland. But I, I do like what he says. I really do. I like what he says. I'm not 100% behind him. But if he was to take over Sunderland, we couldn't really be any worse off than we are now, could we? I, he basically says that some people involved in Sunderland who are locusts. I wonder who them locusts could be. Oh, yes. And Juan Santori, 20% shareholder, hasn't done anything which he hasn't, and the time he's been at Sunderland. So why now is he wanting to buy Sunderland? And why is Stuart Donald talking to this other person when William Story's been trying to do this for five months, building up this team of people for five months, these backers for five months, has the money now in place? So why is Donald talking to this other person if, if William Story is the biggest bid? Is it because the other person could possibly, let's say, let's put a scenario out there, Juan Santori. Juan Satori, should we say. And Juan Satori wants to take over at Sunderland and wants to replace Donald. But Donald also is thinking to himself, right, but I don't want to lose all of my shares. Let me keep, let's do it, let's flip the rules over. Juan Satori, Juan Santori, Juan Satori, he can have 76% of the shares. And me as Donald, 74% of the shares, sorry. And me and Donald, I'll have the 20%. I'll keep my fingers in the pie at Sunderland. I'll take a back seat. I won't even be seen or mentioned again, but I'll own 20% of Sunderland, while Juan Sartori has the 76%, 74% of his backers does, and runs the club. Now, I don't think Stuart Donald's the type of person to walk away from anything unless, unless he's forced out, his hands are all dealt, and, and there's no way he can stay at Sunderland. That's the only way for me that Donald will walk away if there's no other options. If one, if one Sartori is here with an option, Donald will probably stay on. And like Charlie Meffin's done, disappeared and not to be seen again. While Sartori takes over at the helm and deflects everything away from Donald with new backers in. I hope that's wrong. And I'd probably like to see <coughs> Donald go all together. And there's a lot of scepticism about William's story, and I can understand that. I'm skeptical, skeptical myself. But at the end of the day, like I said, if he has massive backers, and he is a massive football fan, then for me, he's probably more the viable option after I've heard him talk today. And he seems a quite open bloke. And I'm not, I don't agree with all the Twitter stuff. I don't agree with owners being on social media, but if that's the way he wants to go, that is entirely up to him. It's his life. So long as he brings Sunderland out of League One and puts them in a fantastic position, either in the Championship or the Premier League, and like I want Donald to do, succeed. So there we go. William Story's been up at Sunderland. He's also been talking to Sean Middleton. Yes, the face of SCFC Fan TV. But unfortunately, Sean couldn't find a cameraman to go and interview him, which is a goddamn shame. 
because Sean's a top bloke and would have done an absolutely world-class job, just like Nick Barnes done tonight. Well, there you go. What do you want? Do you want William Story in? Or do you want Juan Sartori in? Or do you want somebody else in? FPP? Probably would have been the best choice, but we don't know who's backing William Story. Right, please subscribe to the channel and all that nonsense, and we'll see you later. When hopefully, very soon, in September, we'll find out who Sunderland's new owners are. Is it going to be... If I'd seen William, if I'd seen William, 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 William Sartori in Sunderland, if I'd seen William, William Story in Sunderland, I probably wouldn't even recognise them and thought, looks like somebody from ZZ Top. And then once you disappeared, I would have thought, oh my God, it's William Story. You know what I mean? I'm just like, yeah, end of the day. But when you have a beard that size, and you, and you have like a, a messy dinner, like a really like, so let's see, like a, you know when you get a nice Chinese and you have like spare ribs and you eat spare ribs? It must be really uncomfortable getting spare rib juice all over your face. That's all I can think about. Food. But food and ZZ. When I, when I say William Story, I can just think about food and, and ZZ Top. And he's obviously not from ZZ Top. But I wonder if, what was the inspiration behind the beard? That's what I want to ask him. What is the inspiration behind your beard? Is it actually ZZ Top? Or something completely different? Yeah, so he also reminds me of one of those people off um, Game of Thrones. That, that, that big... What was it? Um, him from up the wall. What's, what's it? I think what it's called now. But yeah, he had a massive beard as well. Oh, the, wi the Wildlands! That's it! Reminds me of a Wildland. A, wi a Wildland? A Wildland? A Wildland? Or a Wildland? Uh, one of those, one of those wildlands. Yes, he reminds me of one of those as well. Again, I wish William Story all the best. I'll just ask him some silly questions because I like, a good bit of laugh and I'm sure he enjoys a joke too. Right, we'll see you later. Enjoy the rest of your night.